It is true, this obscure sphere of ours, nestled as it is in the corner of the western spiral arm, is in consistent turmoil. Soul 3 persistently finds itself in a state of anarchistic whirlwind. It was while filming for my county climbs that I realised just how prolific the state of affairs was. Reflecting back on my solid years studying sociology, has it been in with enforced and doubled? This new series of shorts is intended to expand upon that philosophy, exciting and expounding ideas and theories on the state of the world today. One thousand years ago, just as in a windswept field that had recently been requisitioned by the crown, as a lot of things had, things had been in those days, it was raining. Not a light rain, like you get on a moderately uncomfortable day, when shopping, for example, but a harsh, pounding drizzle that soaks into your skin and stays there until dusk. It thundered down on the roof, hoof-beaten grass, pelting against the trees relentlessly. It was dawn, and the earth knew little of what was to take place in just a few hours. Richard de Clare was the first to arrive and sign the document that day, followed closely by William Marshall and some of the northern and Welsh barons who were a little more than a little irked by the king's recent behaviour. The document they signed that morning was called Magna Carta. <laughs> can be asserted about of its relevance to our society today. Not all of it entirely true, or even valid to contemporary society. One thing that can be agreed upon, though, is its significance in relation to democracy as we know it. In the Western world, that is. The fact that King John's legacy forms the basis of individual rights of man is something we take for granted. Over the course of the 900 years, it's a matter where wars we fought. Uh, in the Holy Land and be contested over, causing revolutions still unresolved and continue to amount to the deaths of millions, including our own armies, indeed. The millions we won and lost, leaving shattered societies in the wake of governmental destruction. Ireland, India, the American colonies, the Channel Islands, France, American colonies, France, Belgium, Scotland, and many more, all would fall and be subsumed religiously converted and then be abandoned by British conservatives. It was an arms race, consisting of self-righteous middle classes very similar to selfish John a thousand years ago, stamping his feet because Dan wouldn't let, let him have the big toys such as the other brothers, betraying his siblings when their backs were turned. Except today, we do not have the uptight child who does not have a levy first. We have the capitalist media culture that doesn't know what front page to go with first. Instead of having a whining baby ripping off Jews for income tax, we have disgusting middle-class children ripping off the lesser man, making it small in the eyes of an increasingly oppressive government. Oh, how Lackland would feel he missed out on today's fascism. Today, John the Senators run such an oppressive government that they promulgate the baggage of them, have a mon monopoly on the judicial and financial system, hold limitless bureaucratic organisations, conglomerates and companies. They've taken advantage of the very system they've to support in every way, especially in the wake of Brexit. It's amazing arrogance of artificial dominance and organised dis dissociation that is radiated by the dysfunctional part of humanity, is promoted by multiple examples of social media, popular fictional newspapers like the Daily Mail, the Times and the Guardian. Conservatives continue to ejaculate paranoid propaganda on the heathen breaths of the House of Commons. If it wasn't so obviously pornography, in its rawest form, it would be laughable. It was then the last war, when the welfare state was founded. As most of us know, the dominant part of the government was so pleased with this magnanimous nature of its fervent philanthropy that future consequences were never considered. Today, mass unemployment has become so heavily reliant on the, that instead of unifying the country in crisis, as it was designed to do, it has segregated the fight of the very dictatorship that the country sought to overthrow. The martial, the martial war of fascism was replaced by fascism of state. I wonder if William Marshall had any inkling of the obscenities that would be instigated using a title created in his name. Richard Declare 
who stood next to Marshall as the magnet part of the signed had no idea. His free lands in Carlton and Tunbridge Kent would one day house council officers that supported and upheld the very principles Magna Carta was meant to eradicate. As for John of Lackland, at the House of Plantagenet, King of England, Ireland, and Wales, little can be said in this regard. His performance as a dictator pales in comparison to his social slavery of today's expendable secondary labour force. And we are dependent on the system, or is it dependent on us? Has our organic solidarity made the most notorious King of England into a lackluster lackland by comparison? Or are our humanitarian and genocidal crimes beyond compare? Your question for a million pounds. You can no longer friend a friend because we don't have any. Next, in retrospective rumours, I look at the way in which our realisation of alliances, bearing in mind the fight between Nicola Sturgeon and Theresa May, in particular I look at the battle for an independent Scottish refer referendum and the intent to level it with the old alliance in the 13th century between Scotland and France. Are we pushing the rights of our neighbours away with its justification for our own path? Perhaps it's a quest for flight that we have never resolved. <laughs> Ma hmm. Do you have their fervent philanthropy? We wait. Here we go. Now, if I remember rightly from my college years, my college years, there's a place up here. Is that right? Get it, boy.